Still to come on Take It to the Bridge, this week's look at what's new at the movies. But before we head for Hollywood, we move closer to home to catch up with the laureates of South London Squeeze. Next week, you'll be able to catch album number 12 of theirs. Yes, 12. It's called Ridiculous, and following a marathon month and a half tour of our land, Chris Difford and Glenn Tilbrook have made it to the comfort of our sofa. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks. The 12th album, it must be, I mean, we talk about the difficult third album. What's the, what's the 12th album like? Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> very much the difficult 12th album, actually. We, we, uh, I think we had a harder time recording this record than we have done any since the very early days. Why was that? Um, I think because we, um, we'd sort of decided how long it was going to take to, to record the, the record, and by and large we were right, except there were a couple of things that were niggling us, so we kept on at that, and we'd booked a tour in, in between, which we had to go and do. Basically, we opened up a Pandora's box of possibilities and followed each one to its logical right. conclusion, which meant that it took twice as long. I'm really happy with the result, but it was like tearing your hair out towards the end, just trying to get it finished before we started. Because when you've got a really defined style, as, as well defined as you, you have, then presumably it must be quite difficult to know whether just to go with that or whether to try and branch out and do something new. Well, we did, a both, we did both of those things. We managed to... Uh, keep hold of our roots by playing all the songs live in the studio initially, right. which is where Squeeze's strengths have been over the past years. Um, but then there were sort of more modern elements of, uh, you know, the recent musical goings on that we wanted to uh -huh. encapsulate. So we are we... tiptoeing around the question of Britpop, aren't we? No, not at all. <coughs> no, in fact, no, no not Brit, Brit, Britpop. But we we went off and looked in different avenues of our own musical spheres outside of squeeze right sort of rhythms and that sort of thing and and more in the sort of sense of going for the right vibe if that's the right word and how did the tour go you just come off this huge tour which finished at the albert hall last in oh, london last friday very well indeed yeah mm. do you notice a different audience out there or are these squeeze loyalists and regulars We've noticed, I think, that the one thing we have noticed is that we get a different audience for what sort of venue we play at. There are definitely people who come and see Squeeze who, who would like to uh, sort of sit back and observe and watch and sort of be happy doing that. When we're playing stand-up stand venues, we get a lot of younger people come in who actually uh, aren't particularly content to just stand and watch us, but right. moving around a lot. And that's been something that's happened over the last couple of years, I've noticed a real resurgence in not only our traditional audience that's been getting old with us but uh, you know a younger element creeping in which is great because no one wants to play to exactly the same sort of audience all the time. Oh, well, that sounds terrific. Yeah we, in fact I rem uh, the other night we were signing autographs out in the stores of one particular venue and I happened to look under all the seats there because there was you know, a lot of mess as there normally is and it was mostly made up of smarty boxes and round trees, <laughs> pastels and black <laughs> magic boxes and things. And yet, only the <clears> night before, we were playing somewhere like Glas Glasgow, and yeah. the floor was a sea of spilt beer. Yeah. I think there's a song in that somewhere, probably. You should work on that one. <laughs> now, the song you're actually going to perform for us in a minute or two is Electric Trains from the new album. What's this song about? Well, it's a look back at um, a, a very delicate part of childhood that delicate period where you're just about to, or you're just in the process of growing pubic hair. <laughs> oh, and yeah, that bit. <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> I'm still going through it, of course. <laughs> and you're sort of looking at girls, which I'm still doing. And, um, but at the same time, you, you sort of, you want to maintain those childhood things like Lego and uh, right. toy trains and things like that. Oh, that sounds very poignant. So poignant. that's where the song sort of sparked from originally. Oh, great. Well, thanks very much for coming in, guys. And we very much look forward to hearing this uh, pubic saga <laughs> of the torments of adolescence or something like it. Anyway, great to see you again. Nice. And here they come with Electric Trains. <laughs> 